working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maddie Jansen. Sheriff's investigators are searching for whoever shot a 20-year-old Delano man while he was sleeping in his home. It happened in the early morning hours of September 17th on Casey Avenue in Delano. Casey says is the man. 20-year-old Raymond Juan Richard was asleep at home with his family when someone broke in and shot him. His family tried to save him, but Richard later died at the hospital. If you have any information on the shooting, you're asked to call the sheriff's office at 861-3110, or you can remain anonymous by calling the secret witness hotline. That number is 322-4040. A Delano woman was one of two people killed in a gruesome crash on Highway 99 Friday. You may remember the deadly accident shut down Highway 99 near Rosedale Highway for about eight hours Friday. The coroner says 62-year-old Kathy Jane McNutt of Delano and 75-year-old Luther Goldman of Lemoore both died in the accident. They were in a pickup truck that was hit by a semi. A GoFundMe has been set up for McNutt's funeral expenses. It says she was a loving grandma, mother, daughter, and sister. The account describes Goldman as her boyfriend and says that any extra money will go to his family. Bakersfield police are searching for a driver who hit a bicyclist late last night and then drove off, leaving the man in the middle of the street. It happened about 10.45 p.m. on South P Street, just south of Highway 58. The man was taken to the hospital in critical condition. BPD says there were no witnesses in the, to the crash and asks anyone with information to call them. Kern County firefighters made quick work of a mobile home fire this morning. It happened at a trailer park on McCord Avenue before 7 a.m. There was one person inside when flames broke out, but she escaped. No one was hurt. The cause is under investigation. Tomorrow, Kern County supervisors will consider a possible vaping ban. The board will hear a report on vaping as the CDC investigates a nationwide outbreak of lung injuries. They'll consider bans on vaping and the sale of vaping-related products in the county, although supervisors are not expected to vote. This comes after three vaping-related lung injuries resulted in hospitalizations in Kern County. As of October 15th, the health department says 1,479 lung injuries have been linked to vaping across the country, 33 resulting in death. The board will also consider banning smoking in parks and on public sidewalks. Supervisors are not expected to vote on any of the options on Tuesday. All right, let's take a look outside. It's going to be a beautiful, pretty mild work week, right, Kev? Exactly. Yeah, it was a great weekend out there. We hit 77 degrees yesterday. Our normal this time of year is 77, so 6 degrees off that. And we take a look at temperatures for November 4th, which is today. Last year, we hit 79 degrees on this date, 73 in 2017. We were in the 60s in 16 and 15, and then uh, upper 60s in 2014. So it gives you a perspective of what we were looking at the last several years on this November. November 4th. Right now we've got 75 degrees in Bakersfield, just a light wind out of the west northwest at 7 under sunny skies. As we go throughout the afternoon, we will rise near 80, slipping back into the mid 50s by midnight. And then for the mountains, a nice start to the afternoon. 73 degrees right now, a southeast wind at 13 miles per hour. And as we take a look at the temperatures for you this afternoon, we're expecting the lower 70s, but then it gets really cool once again, and we'll be back into the 40s as we approach the 8 o'clock hour. Much more on our forecast in just a little bit, but first let's send it back over to you. All right, thanks, Kevin. Now to the latest on the impeachment inquiry. The three House committees leading the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump released two transcripts of the behind-closed-doors interviews they've conducted so far as part of the investigation as the probe moves to a more public phase. According to the transcript, Marie Yovanovitch, the ousted U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, told House impeachment investigators last month that U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, told her she should tweet out support or praise for President Donald Trump if she wanted to save her job. The committee has also released a transcript of a deposition of former Ambassador Michael McKinley, who recently resigned as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's senior advisor. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, who's leading the inquiry, told reporters that tomorrow the committees will release the transcripts of the interviews with Sondland and former U.S. envoy to Ukraine Kurt Volker. The remainder of the transcripts or interviews of interviews that have been conducted thus far could all be released before Friday. A federal appeals court has ruled President Trump must hand over his tax returns to New York prosecutors in a criminal probe. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals has affirmed a lower court's decision that denied the president from being able to stop the grand jury subpoena for his tax returns and tax documents from his tax preparer. The subpoena was sought by Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance. 
The three-judge panel wrote in their decision that, quote, any presidential immunity from state criminal process does not extend to investigative steps like the grand jury subpoena at issue here. It's not yet clear whether the, or not the president's legal team will appeal this latest decision to the Supreme Court. Nearly 500 inmates are scheduled to be set free in Oklahoma today on commuted sentences. This may be the biggest one-day prisoner release in U.S. history. NBC's Ron Mott is outside one prison in Taft, Oklahoma. Early release is something every inmate behind bars dreams of. But today, that dream will be a reality for hundreds of inmates in Oklahoma. A new law on the books makes simple drug possession a misdemeanor, giving offenders already serving felony time for those crimes a chance at freedom. It's a measure voters approved by ballot in 2016. Prisoners convicted of minor drug possession and property crimes under $1,000 now eligible for release. Last week, Oklahoma's Pardon and Parole Board held hundreds of hearings for prisoners requesting to have their sentences shortened for a variety of offenses. Uh, he definitely has an opportunity. Corey Harris came on behalf of his brother, who appeared by video and says he's already lined up a job for him. Very important that when they do get out that they have somewhere to go. Otherwise, you know, they'll, they'll revert back to their old habits. Robert Ferguson, Ian Fine, Crystal Fisher, Daniel Fish. On Friday, the parole board making it official, handing the governor the names of some 500 prisoners to be freed, the largest single-day commutation in history. In the run-up to these releases, the state's been holding what they call re-entry fairs for these inmates, helping them line up jobs, housing, getting them counseling, IDs, driver's licenses, things that they will need. Officials say just this first round of releases should save taxpayers upwards of $12 million. Ron Mott, NBC News, Taft, Oklahoma. It's that time of year again. Wednesday's your chance to give back to local veterans. Honor Flight Kern County and KGET are inviting you to be part of the annual All Media All Day Fundraiser. The goal is to raise big bucks to send more than 100 veterans to their memorials for another charter flight April 7th of next year. This Wednesday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., they'll be at three locations accepting donations. Those are Salty's on White Lane, Riverwalk on Stockdale Highway by P.F. Chang's, and Rosedale Highway by Chewy's. You can volunteer or swing by with a donation. And you can also text this number if you'd like to help out, 205-1478. For a list of locations, visit our website, kget.com. Well, could a new streaming app soon be free? As so-called subscription fatigue sets in at what Comcast is considering doing. Plus, a reporter live streams her very first mammogram. And what happens during it changes her life. Your 17 Health Watch is after the break. Back here in your Health Watch, Breast Cancer Awareness Month has come to a close, but preventing the disease should be year-round. Last year, a news reporter from Oklahoma City learned she had breast cancer after live-streaming her first mammogram. Allie Meyer shares her personal story. I turned 40 last year, and I felt great and grateful for a life busting at the seams with good fortune. Everything was just perfect. Here we go. I'm in the changing room at Breast Health Network. For Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I agreed to have my first mammogram on Facebook Live. And Claire? Claire Turmel, marketing coordinator at Stevenson Cancer Center. This whole thing was her idea. It's the internet. They've seen it all before. I thought this would be easy, no big deal, 30 minutes. I made the appointment for you at one of our Breast Health Network locations. You know, I asked you to come meet me there, thought we'd be in and out. Hey, everyone. All right, so I was hoping for a routine little mammogram, and that's not how this went. My heart just sunk because I never in a million years expected, you know, it not just to be a quick and easy you know, story about, you know, your first mammogram. Radiologist Dr. Richard Falk found cancerous calcifications in my right breast. So I have breast cancer, um, and I don't have a ton of answers yet, um, but um, I'm going to have an MRI next week to confirm exactly what we're dealing with and get a plan of action in place. This has been hard and um, shocking. It does kind of rock you to your core. You guys have been really supportive, and I appreciate it so much. This is not the news that I was hoping to tell you about to raise breast cancer awareness, um, but it's what I got, so there we go. Non-invasive, 
ductal breast cancer is one of the most survivable kinds. But there's a catch, or at least there was for me. I needed to remove my entire right breast to get all the cancer. And I was crushed. Two months after that first mammogram, I walked into Lakeside Women's Hospital for right side, skin sparing, nipple sparing mastectomy. And even though surgery was my choice, it felt like forced mutilation. It's close to the nerves. Mm -hmm. Plastic surgeon Dr. Oscar Master scrubbed in and put me back together beautifully. Keeping the most personal part of my body intact was important to me. If it's safe to do for the patient, then more breast surgeons and more plastic surgeons are opting to keep the nipple and areola. Fortunately for you, you had a tumor that was more favorable, so sparing the nipple and areola was a good option for you. My surgical options, my recovery, and my outcome were all better because my mammogram found the cancer before I even knew it was there. This year, my second annual 3D screening mammogram and I am thrilled and relieved to tell you, all clear. Looking for everything. Looking for everything. Yeah. Okay. And that was Allie Meyer reporting. Genetic testing confirmed she does not have any of the genetic mutations for breast cancer. To hear more about her journey, you can visit kfor.com. All right. Well, another health story this afternoon. This one about teenagers and too much screen time. Could that screen time be le leading to learning difficulties? Researchers at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center tested a small group of kids between the ages of 3 and 5. Participants completed standard cognitive tests followed by diffusion tensor imaging. They found those who had more screen time experienced lower expressive language skills, literacy skills, and processing speeds. Experts say more research needs to be done to determine if these findings could indicate long-term neurodevelopmental risks. The Arts Council of Kern unveiled its newly completed murals at Panorama Park this morning. The new murals were done in partnership with local artists. The theme, wildflowers. The goal to beautify and prevent graffiti. And what a beautiful morning it was for that unveiling out there. Kev? Yeah, it was a beautiful weekend, a beautiful morning. We're looking at a beautiful afternoon. You can see clear skies. And uh, air quality, though, today still unhealthy for sensor groups, so we still have a little bit of a haze around the area. And we'll talk about the burn status as well coming up in a minute here. Overnight, 47, right on track with where we should be this time of year. Our normal high, 71, and the record on this date, 89. Sit back in 1931 with the time change. Your sunset tonight will be at 459. Temperatures right now, uh, right now running into the 70s and uh, mid-70s uh, for Bakersfield and Taft. Lower 70s for Wasco and Delano and then 60s, 70s and even a few lower 80s. 80s out there, 81 out of Lake Isabella. We've got 73 and sunny out in Wasco. Uh, Arvin, also nice and sunny in upper 70s. Golden Hills, clear skies, and currently you're at 74. Skies remain clear. We did see a little bit of a coastal fog. That is burning off. And temperatures, as we look at them right now, 64 in San Francisco, 73 in Fresno, and lower 70s south. Daytime highs today, a little warm out of Los Angeles, 78 there, 79 in Fresno, and upper 70s in Sacramento. So the state under a little bit of a warm up here, even though we we are starting out in November. The beach is also looking very nice after some morning fog this morning. 69 degrees and sunny this afternoon. Morro Bay at 70 with a west-northwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. High pressure is in control here. Very little change on this as we go throughout the next seven days. I see no systems really going to impact our weather. And you can see a lot of this riding up into British Columbia, especially no rain for California for at least the next seven days and probably beyond that. So here's a look at all the headlines. Sunny skies next seven. No rain, just calm weather. Temperatures remain 10 degrees above normal for November. 71 is our target temperature. And last time we had measurable rain was September 5th, and we picked up two hundredths of an inch. Today, air quality unhealthy for sensitive groups with an AQI 102, and no burning is allowed into the valley because of the air quality situation. And today, temperatures will be right near 80 for Bakersfield, 79 in Porterville, 78 in Taft and Maricopa with a light wind throughout the day. And then for the mountains, sunny skies and east wind 5 to 10 70 in Fraser Park 74 in Tatchby near 80 into the Kern River Valley 79 in Wofford Heights 76 in Weldon and then for the desert upper 70s lower 80s today and an easterly wind 5 to 10 here's your extended forecast and very little change lower 80s through Friday upper 70s for Saturday and Sunday overnight will be in the 50s and then for the mountains plenty of sunshine 
and 70s across the board. So no changes on the daytime highs uh, except for today, and then tomorrow we'll drop it a couple of degrees. Uh, temperatures will remain into the 40s overnight. And then for the Kern River Valley, 70s to lower 80s through next Sunday overnight in the lower 50s. So very little change day to day here. All right, looking beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Kev. Well, it's that time of year again when the search for the hottest toy gets fierce. A parent's guide in your 17 Business Watch coming up after the break. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. We're back now on your 17 Business Watch, and the stock, it, stock market keeps setting new highs in a rally economists did not see coming. This morning, the Dow set a new record today, up nearly 18% on the year. The Nasdaq up 49 points so far in trading, and the S&P 500 up 11. Let's check out oil prices while we're at it. West Texas Intermediate selling for 56.53 a barrel, and Midway Sunset started the day at 59.95 a barrel. With the ever-growing list of streaming options and subscription fatigue setting in, NBC's Peacock streaming service may be free. Comcast, the parent company of NBC Universal, is considering making an ad-supported version of its Peacock streaming service free for everyone. Previously, Comcast had planned on making Peacock free to cable subscribers and Comcast broadband, broadband customers. The new plan, which is still under consideration, would be to give away the ad-supported Peacock streaming service to anyone who wants it. An ad-free version would also be available, but would come with a charge. Here comes the Christmas shopping season and the challenge of getting your child the hottest toy out there. But who is a parent to trust when determining just what that hottest toy is? Here's NBC's Chris Clackham. Helping ensure the happiest of Christmas mornings, parents often rely upon hot toy lists. A toy list is just for a place for a parent to start researching. Research, but be reasonable and aware. So do toy companies pay to be on these toy lists? At the end of the day, yes, there's money going back and forth between the manufacturers and the retailers to be on a list. Jim Silver, CEO of Toys, Tots, Pets and More, TTPM for short, who's quick to suggest you'll look at multiple hot lists. There's so many independent resources like We're One uh, and so many others out there that you can go out and research a toy. <laughs> TTPM once famously picked Tickle Me Elmo and Monster High Dolls as hottest toys of the year. The passenger seats recline. They offer reviews on some 2,500 toys each year and don't charge for placement on their list. So what's on TTPM's hot toy list this year? Well, right now it's the LOL OMG dolls. Those are blowing out, and if you can get your hands on one, I'd get one now. But whatever you get now, just make sure it's on your child's hot toy list, too. Chris Clackham, NBC News. You might even want to wait until closer to Christmas to make those toy purchases because two new kids' movies are due for release around the holidays. Frozen 2 and Star Wars Episode 9. So, who knows, you could end up with some merchandising on some of those lists to Santa Claus. Well, still ahead here on 17 News at Noon, we'll tell you how you can be part of a mission to help the families of fallen officers. Welcome back. It is time for the 10th annual Tips for Chips, benefiting the CHP Widows and Orphans Trust Fund. And joining us this afternoon, Officer Robert Rodriguez, along with Morgan Martin, daughter of fallen officer Mark Ely. Good afternoon to both of you. Thanks so much for coming in. Hey, thanks for having Thank us. You. So, Morgan, I know you lost your dad back in 2010. What does yeah. this fund uh, mean to you and your family? It means a lot to us. We've uh, experienced firsthand, you know, the traumatic loss of... Um, you know, my dad, who was an officer, and it means a lot that we're able to help other families who are going through hard times just like us, and it feels really good. We're so sorry for back. your loss. Um, I know that it's been coming up on 10 years now. Um, yeah. How was it able to help your family through the years? Well, there, you know, is a lot of stress that goes on after, you know, losing for my mom, her husband, and me, my dad. There's a lot that comes with that tragic loss, and... The fact that the Widows and Orphans Fund is able to step in and provide some financial relief immediately, it helps us to, you know, that's one thing we don't have to worry about as much. We can focus on each other and focus on 
you know, just working through other big things. Absolutely, and we want to continue that mission, and that's why Morgan's here. She's continuing that mission to help others in the same position, yes. family, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and what can people do to be part of that on Wednesday, Robert? Oh, man, they show up. Come on down. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be at the Outback Steakhouse from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, they can dine in. If they can't dine in, they can they can do takeout as well. We'll have steak. We'll have chicken. And, so, uh, and of course, that Bloomin' Onion. Uh, we'll have CHP officers uh, present there uh, serving you. And this is uh, Tips for Chips. This is Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Do you have to get your tickets ahead of time or just show up? You can you can purchase them ahead of time. You can also purchase them there at the door. Okay. And if you want to get those ahead of time, how do you do that? Um, if you get those ahead of time. Uh, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, so we, we do have a contact here. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and leave it with you. And okay. then that way we'll everyone, can, every, everyone can get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can call ahead of time to get your tickets or you can just get them at the door. Tickets are $25. Again, this is happening on Wednesday. You're going to be served by the finest and you're also going to be helping an amazing cause. So thank you guys both so much for coming in this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thanks thank for having you. us. All right. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Finally at noon, Macy's unveiled the new balloons that will appear in their 93rd annual Thanksgiving parade. I can't believe it's just around the corner. Oh, cool. The giant balloons were unveiled at Macy's annual Balloon Fest in New Jersey this weekend. That's where they are test flown or test driven to make sure that they're ready for their parade debut. This year's newest additions include Netflix's Green Eggs and Ham. There we got Smokey the Bear. There was an astronaut Snoopy we saw a moment ago there. And SpongeBob SquarePants and Gary. Um, there's also a balloon from world renowned contemporary artist Yayoi Kusama, and it will take to the sky on Thanksgiving. Of course, you can watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Here, starting at 9 a.m., my favorite thing to watch while I'm in the kitchen getting ready for Thanksgiving. What? Oh, the, the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day Parade. I thought there was a specific part. Oh, the whole thing. But I do love the um, Broadway performances. Yeah, the that Broadway they break performances out and, are and good. Perform. Oh, my gosh. I'm just always amazed at the, the balloons, the construction of them, how they put them together. Mm -hmm. And, man, hats off to all those folks on the ground trying to steer those things through the tight streets. Would you ever want to be there in person? Or watch it on TV? You know, I'm one of these people that I like to watch things on TV. I, I don't <laughs> mind going to events, but that I'm not a... so hectic. I'm about. not a real crowd person. I get yeah. very uh, claustrophobic in crowds. Um, so it's like New Year's in New York. Do I have a... The Times do Square? I wa no. Do I ever want to do good. it? good. No, I'm good. Right from my living yeah. room, comfy couch, and man, you guys look cold, and I'm nice and warm. But uh, the Thanksgiving parade, eh, that's iffy. I yeah. think it'd be kind of cool. It is really cool, though. Kind of a change in the seasons and everything. Mm -hmm. So something to look forward to. We're able to show you some cool uh, new balloons headed uh, that way. All right, just uh, three and a half weeks away. Yeah. Can't believe it. Thanks so much for joining us here for 17 News at Noon. We'll see you back tonight at 5 and 6. Have a great day. 17 News, your local news leader, continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News.